Hey guys, welcome to the video. So quickly, let's talk about the M1 Mac chips and the M1 Mac Pros and the M1 uh, MacBook Air. Somebody asked me a little while back, will they, will they be good for development? And I said like a month ago or so, a month or so ago when they first just came out that they were gonna be great. I think they are the computers of the future. I got some pushback, but uh, time now has passed, one big month. And let's see what the interwebs tells us about what has happened. So let's check it out. You can now run Python on Apple M1 Mac OS. Isn't that interesting? And that came out uh, 16 days ago. Uh, with the release of the latest version of Python, the popular language now officially supports M1 powered machine. So that means that Python will now run pretty fast. Apple announces its plans to submit patches to enable Python 3 to build natively on Apple Silicon back in August. The new M1 powered machines have impressed everyone with their performance and Python developers have been wanting a piece of the pie. So, um, so anyway, there are now, at the time of writing this, there are experimental installers, et cetera, et cetera. That's just one example. Let's go on to the next one here. Oh, look at this. Microsoft adds M1 support for many Microsoft 365 apps and Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code, if you don't know, is probably one of the best, if not the best, code editor out there today. You know, them or JetBrains, hard to say. But uh, as you can see, already within a month, Microsoft is now supporting um, M1 Max. What just happened? Windows 10 support for ARM-based M1 Max is nowhere in sight, but Microsoft has updated several productivity apps. Wait a minute, okay, Windows support, anyway. But they've up updated several of its productivity apps to run natively on Apple Silicon. Microsoft is updating most of its Microsoft 365 suite of apps for the Mac to provide native support for the latest Mac Mini, Mac Air, and MacBook Pro 13. This includes core Office apps like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and OneNote, which are now able to utilize the full performance capabilities of Apple on Apple, on Apple Silicon while allowing for longer runtime battery. Microsoft is rolling out the updated apps as universal binaries, so they will still work great if you install them on Intel-based Macs. Um, let me just comment on that. Uh, the performance update with the M1 chips are off the charts. This is a game changing. This is not just some typical incremental update. This is something we, uh, we don't see too often, this big, huge leap. And this is definitely a leap forward in terms of uh, processing power, which is everything. Also, battery power. M1 Max will run on very little power. So your laptops will last forever. Well, not forever, but quite a long time. This is a step up from last month when Microsoft redesigned Office apps for Mac OS Big Sur if that, if that needed to use Apple II Rosetta translation tech to run on M1 Max. However, the Teams app will still rely on that for a while as the company says it's still working on the universal binary. Anyway, uh, so more news on uh, the, I, I, the Microsoft updates, but let's check up some other things. Apple Silicon M1 chips and Docker. So now it's on, uh, this is a bit of an earlier post in this November, but apparently now it's working very well on M1 the last time I checked. Let's look at JetBrains, the other stellar IDE manufacturer out there. Update regarding new M1 powered Macs. We are continuing to work on porting the JetBrains runtime using all our IDEs to the new Mac platform. And we hope to publish the first build by the end of this year. That means, uh, you know, within, I'm recording this uh, December 25th because I Christmas is canceled by COVID for me. So I figured I'll record some videos for you guys. Anyway, so within a few days, it should be out. But for now, IntelliJ IDE, runs great with Rosetta 2. Apparently a lot of uh, applications are running pretty good on IntelliJ, uh, excuse me, on Rosetta 2, not just um, JetBrains. Uh, so anyway, I there's more, but in the end, at the end of the day, I just wanna point out in this video how 
I think that uh, if you were a developer and if you could afford it, I think you'd be very well off with a MacBook Air M1 or a MacBook Pro M1. Uh, they're affordable. You get tremendous speed and power. You can even do like gaming on it now, apparently. And um, what you call it, uh, and the battery life is unbelievably good. Unbelievably good. I'm seeing, I watch reviews of, uh, of hardware from the context of video editing and so forth. And uh, M1 chips are just blowing away Intel. Just blowing away, it's not even close. Uh, short Intel stock. I can't give it investment advice, but anyway, there you go. So yeah, if you're new to software development and uh, you're looking at getting a new computer, you want something light and nimble uh, and super fast, then you, I don't think you can go wrong with M1. It's only been a month and already you're seeing all these companies jumping on board. I think you're gonna see everybody jump on board. Within the next few months, you'll see much more adoption. Um, but already it's ready to go for uh, development. So you should be good to go. So yeah, big thumbs up on the Apple M1 chip. Good for developers today in December uh, 2020. That's it for now. Bye-bye.